Okay, so here we are in an aerial virtual tour I created around this park. And what you'll notice on the screen is a bunch of what they call portals. So if I click on one of these portals, it'll take me through to that 360 pano. Another thing you'll notice there is that I had the sound effect. And the thing about sound effects that's cool is they're directional. So if I move away, the sound disappears. And as I look down on these trees, you'll hear pigeons, for example. So let's just jump through to another one of the portals. And I'm just going to turn off sound to make it easier to hear the lecture. Another thing you can add is information points or what they call hotspots. If I click on that, it'll bring up more information or a picture and so on. So the idea is you can create several 360 panels of an area and link them up. And this will have amazing application for projects like golf courses, hotels, schools, universities, and so on. And I'm going to show you how to do this. I found a really easy method that's free. Now you can go that route, but what I like about roundme.com is that it's firstly free and it's super easy to use and I'll take you through it. So before you go and create an account, let me just show you what your options are. Okay, you can have a basic account which is free or a pro account. And the basic account gives you 15 uploads per week, which is plenty. The pro is unlimited. Uh, the main difference here is really quality. On the basic you get 10,000 pixel images and on the highest quality pro you can go up to 65,000 which is six and a half times better quality. So that can make a difference. You can create virtual tours for both. On the pro you get a, a level of customization and a level of privacy such as unlisting. I'll take you through that a bit later. But however, if you have the free account and you want to do what's called a pro embed um, you can purchase it on a once-off so you can stay with a free account and if you decide you want to go with full customization what they call white labeling then you just pay $15 once off and it could be worth it the same goes for privacy and security so I know this sounds a little bit confusing if you have the pro account if you also want to access these two extra features you also have to pay for them but you have a level of the, this kind of feature built in so it just depends on what you're looking for so let me jump right in and show you how to create an aerial virtual tour on roundme.com Okay, once your account is set up, you just click on create space and it tells you to drag and drop your images in. So I'm going to drag these JPEGs, let them upload and we'll go to the next step. Okay, the first step is to give your aerial tour a title and a description as well as choose a category and then to choose which is going to be your cover pick. So what it does is it gives you thumbnails from the various panels and you can choose which one will be your cover. So we'll just go with this one here. We'll leave it unpublished for now, which means it's in draft. If I want to make it unlisted, which means it can't be discovered on Roundme by the general public, which is ideal for if you're working for a client, then you would tick unlisted, but that's only available if you have a pro account. And then you can decide whether you want previews to be shown or if you want comments. The customization is throughout this tool and I'll, I'll show you. But let's just say we click save and it brings us into the very first panel that we uploaded. The next step is to give a title to all of your panos. You'll see it's still ingesting the rest of them. So we'll give a title. This one here, I'm looking at it, is the Scouts. And I will go through and give titles to the rest of them. And I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I've added titles to all my pictures. And now it's a case of making sure each one is set up correctly. So let's go through them one by one. First of all, you want to decide which will be your opening pano. So in this case, the very first pano on the left of the slider will be your opening pano, and that's Scouts. Then I want to decide how it opens, which orientation. So let me move it until I'm looking at this area here, and I click on this button, Capture Snapshot. And what that does is it means, firstly, the thumbnail down here will have that snapshot, and then also when people arrive at this particular pano, they'll be facing this direction. The second item on the list is panorama location so you can just check whether it's located and it's facing the correct direction on the map so if you look here on the map the area that it's looking at more or less matches what I'm seeing so that's great but if it was off I can move the slider and get the orientation correct so there the orientation is fine and I click Save I can then set up a zoom limitation so for example if I move the left slider all the way to the left, it means that people will be able to zoom all the way in. But if you want to reduce how far they can zoom, you just move that left slider a little bit in and you push apply. 
you can change your image by clicking on that icon and if you have the pro package you can download the original file from that cloud okay great so you just go through and make sure all your images are facing where you want them to face okay the next step is to create portals so what are portals portals are the way in which you move around between your panels so let's just say for example we want to be able to create a portal link to the lower dam panel we simply drag the lower dam off the preview and into the picture and we put this icon where we want the portal to be and once that portal is created it's got the title which we did earlier we click save and if I switch to viewing mode and I click on the portal you'll see I get transported to that panel and now we basically have the beginning of a tour I'm just gonna go back into edit mode and if I look back you'll notice that it hasn't created a corresponding portal so if I want a corresponding portal I must just grab scouts and drop it in up there now you can link all your portals in every page to one another or you can link several it's up to you so I'm just going to add a couple more to give you an idea of how this works we're going to bring the entrance one up to the top there and click Save and I think what I'll do is I'll bring the Simba Park now at this point I can decide whether I want to add in the upper dam and middle dam or whether I want people to do that from Simba Park so let's just say I want to jump to Simba Park because we're in edit mode I can't click on the portal I'll just click on Simba Park on the bottom right and at this point I can add in the middle dam which is about over there and the upper dam which is about over there great so what you have to do is you have to go through each one and connect all the portals until you're happy so remember at this point we don't have any portals going back so I'd need to create lower dam and you get the idea I'll just finish it here we'll put scouts more or less where it is and we will put the entrance okay good so there we have it so I suppose a nice feature would be if it automatically did, did this for you but in any case it's not a big deal the next step is I'm going to create a hotspot so I drag the eye over the area of interest so for example this play park and I give it a title and then I can add an image or I can write a description so I'm going to add an image and I pull in the image okay a little trick once the image is ingested if you want it to view bigger just click on that to bring it up bigger and then click create so when people click on your hotspot it'll bring up a nice big image which is what you want them to see another idea is to incorporate one of the videos that you've shot so all you have to do is paste the URL from YouTube or Vimeo into the box and give it a title and don't forget to expand it and then click create which means when people then click on that hotspot they'll be able to play and watch one of the videos that you created for the area which is awesome because now you're incorporating multimedia and you're getting the full effect of showcasing all the stuff that you've created for this area okay so the next step is how to create a sound you drag your directional sound icon over where you want the sound and then you bring in one of your sound files they have to be an mp3 maximum five megs and you drop that in and you'll see this blue area indicates the sound so if I move away from the blue area because it's directional the sound will go away but if I want the sound in every direction I just push it to 360 degrees and then no matter where I'm looking even though you don't see the blue you'll hear the sound now that could be quite useful for example if you wanted instead of a sound you could add a narration I'm just going to mute it for now and um, so if you did a narration and you had a voice artist and you recorded a narration you could have it playing for the whole of the panel and you could decide whether you want to loop or add a delay and so on but you click create so there we have our first aerial tour we basically created portals linking the panels we've created a hotspot and a directional sound okay I'm just going to put the sound off for now now I want to basically see whether this tour is looking correct so first thing I do is I go on settings and make sure I'm set to published and next step is to put it onto view mode click on the three dots and click on the share it will copy the link to your clipboard I'm just going to open it up in an incognito browser and I will now see what the tour will look like so remember the opening page was scouts and it's in that position that I wanted and if I look around I can see so let's just jump down to lower dam from lower dam I can go to Simba Park and you'll see the sound is working the hotspots working 
and everything's looking good. The tour's looking fine. So that's great. So really all that's left to do at this stage is to go back into your tour editor and link everything up so that you have a complete tour. I'm now going to show you how to use the advanced features which you have to pay for and you can decide if it's uh, something that you'd like to look at. Okay, so the two advanced features that you can pay for on a once-off basis, the first one is privacy. If, for example, you want to whitelist your domain, so let's just say you're doing this for a client and you only want the embed to work on their domain. So if someone tries to embed it on their website, it won't be allowed. You can get that whitelist feature. You can also decide whether anyone can view it or only people with a link and so on. And that's $10, so that could be useful for your client. And then the one that's quite powerful and requires a little bit of running through is the pro embed okay so firstly at the end of going through this whole process you're going to request an embed code and it's going to ask you to pay $15 this is even if you have a pro account and you just have to see if it's worth it I think in some cases for a client it will be and then it will ask you to save the layout so if you look over here I've got a bunch of layouts but I'm going to be working off the default but as you go you can decide you know what templates you like and save them so you can apply them more quickly the next time so the first step is to decide the size for the embed. So I'll go with 960 by 540. And then you've really got a decision as to whether you're going to have a launch screen, which is what you see over here. So when people view it on the website, they'll have to click play. Whether you're going to bypass the launch screen and go straight into the viewer. So that's something you need to decide. If you want to have the launch screen, by all means, you can then decide if you want to you know, change the cover, the logo, the title. So let's just add my logo to this quickly. Now at this stage you can use your client's logo or your logo, you put custom logo and I'm going to be using a white PNG so it's transparent and you'll see it pops up there, it's a bit big so I can reduce it in size and there's my logo. And then I can decide if I want for example the titles, so say for example I want to take off location and author credits, you can decide what you want. Once you're happy with that, you then go into the viewer. Now remember, you can skip this step and go straight into the viewer, but let's just jump into the viewer now, assuming that we want this step. Okay, so the viewer basically has got the logo as well. So what we're going to do is just shrink it a bit. It's a little bit big. Okay, and then we go step by step. First one is, what do we want the starting panorama to be? So even though we had scouts by default because it's on the left, we can change it at the stage if we want on the pro embed it will leave it um, you can decide what you want what information title wise so for example if you feel that locations are necessary and uh, the panorama titles are necessary you can just have the space title which is aerial virtual tour or you can remove the space and just have the panorama so now we're on the scouts panorama I think that's quite useful because it helps you navigate and you can decide if you want author credits on or off previews is interesting because they allow you to jump from any panorama to the next without having to navigate through the portals but they take up a little bit of space so if you remove it then you have more space to view so I'm going to leave them on and then map you can decide whether the map will be open by default I don't think that's a good idea I don't think it adds a lot of value so I would rather just say map should be opened when you click on it and you can even remove the map icon so there's really a lot of customization okay you can decide whether you want to enable portals or not I presume you would if you're creating a tour as well as hotspots and you can also play with the navigation mode so at the moment it's click and drag and you can change it to QTVR but I much prefer click and drag and the next one which is really awesome is projection so you can determine what the projection is and then you can allow your audience to change a projection which I think is cool but I really like this one little planet entrance when you click on this it basically starts off with a little planet and then drops in and that really is very impactful and it gives your audience a sense that they're dropping into this 3D environment so if you're going to go to the trouble of purchasing a pro embed definitely go for a little planet and you can go through all of these there's a lot of customization you can just go through them one by one you really have a lot of control over how this panorama is going to be seen by your audience and what you choose to allow and not allow and at the end of it um, for example, full screen mode is obviously important. You've got to just double click and it opens up in full screen. And at the end of this entire process, you request the embed code. And as I say, you're going to have to pay your extra $15 to, to, to unlock that. And you then hand that to your client. And basically, you will have a fully customized virtual tour which your client can enjoy. So if we have a look at something that I've done for my own website, it's a 
embed where it's not an aerial tour, it's a land-based tour, but you'll see it begins with a drop-down into my lounge and it doesn't have any names or titles. It basically just has my logo and that's how I chose to, to have it running. Now, if you look at the embed that we did from the project we were busy with, um, this is not a pre embed, this is me just using embed code. I couldn't do the little planet drop in and I didn't have all the customization, but still not bad. So the free embed, which is what you're looking at here, is also pretty nifty. You just miss one or two of the extra features. The reason you see my logo is because I can add my logo to all my embeds as a pro user. So if I just show you how that works, as a pro user, if I um, go to settings and I go to branding, I can pull my logo into all my embeds. Now, the problem there is that it's going to be applied to every embed. So if you want to put your client's logo on a specific embed, then you're going to have to purchase the pro embed for $15. And the other great thing about RoundMe is that you can explore, there's a community, you can learn, you can interact, and people can give you feedback. So it's a very powerful tool, but really for creating these virtual tours, um, I think it's awesome. I'm just going to double click to make it full screen. And you'll see it's great. If I want to just click once, everything goes away. If I click again, you can see the various items. And yeah, I think the experience is very good. Uh, it's very easy to set up and you can get away with creating a, a virtual tour. Unfortunately, not branded, but you can do it for free. So I hope you enjoyed that and go out there and create aerial virtual tours. And the other thing is you're not limited just to aerial shots. You could have land-based shots as well. So a couple of ideas, if you think about it, you can do one or two land-based shots, you can do a whole bunch of aerial shots, you can do narration, you can add that in narration as a sound effect, and you can really turn it into a professional tour. And just remember the applications, hotels, resorts, um, golf courses, schools, universities, any, any place where people want to have multiple points of view of a particular location, you can give them a, an amazing experience with an aerial virtual tour. Thank you for watching.